Welcome to Exposing Mold, the podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, an expert researcher in nanoparticles. Dr. Gotti, thank you so much for your time. Would you grace us with an introduction to your work? Yes, it is a pleasure to, to have uh, this connection with you. Uh, I am a, a, a physicist, I have a degree in physics, but I attended also a, a, a school of specialization in biomedical technologies, bioengineering. And uh, I perform my career inside uh, the, the university, in different universities. So I, I have an academic background and uh, um, I had uh, the possibility to uh, perform research, scientific research. Uh, thanks also to grants from uh, Italy, but uh, mostly from the European Commission. In fact, uh, I uh, had uh, two important uh, uh, grants in nanopathology and in nanotoxicology. Uh, nanopathology is a, a new word that I invented uh, as a title of my first uh, um, research project for the European Commission uh, project that uh, I shared with the University of Cambridge. University of Mainz in Germany and with Philips. So uh, it was a very important uh, uh, study um, that uh, focused uh, the attention on a um, new diagnostic tool in order to verify the exposure that uh, people uh, can uh, have uh, in the working place uh, or outside uh, in uh, the uh, urban uh, environment, uh, in uh, urban contamination. <laughs> and uh, uh, this uh, project uh, um, was aimed to uh, identify this pollution inside the pathological tissues, inside uh, uh, human, but also animal tissues. And after uh, we uh, tried also to uh, identify this contamination in food, uh, in water, uh, in uh, fish, uh, and uh, um, this uh, uh, work, uh, this study that started in uh, 2002, um, is uh, still operating. In fact, uh, uh, now we continue to verify uh, uh, the presence of uh, a, a contamination uh, uh, in uh, cancerogenic uh, tissues, uh, uh, in pathological tissues affected by um, mysterious uh, uh, diseases. Uh, um, and uh, uh, we help um, many uh, ill persons. Um, also because uh, we identify this pollution uh, inside uh, uh, the, uh, the tissues, uh, bioptic tissues, uh, toxic tissues, and so on. Uh, we uh, verify the morphology dimension, but also we identify the chemical composition. And uh, we are able to trace uh, this uh, contamination in the environment uh, where the patient uh, lived. Uh, and uh, it is uh, interesting because uh, uh, it, it is a, a detective investigation and sometimes uh, someone could be uh, Sherlock Holmes <laughs> because uh, we are uh, able uh, to discover uh, uh, some uh, um, episodes uh, of contamination that uh, uh, the patient uh, didn't remember, uh, but uh, this contamination uh, was internalized and uh, was disseminated in uh, all the body. Uh, now we are studying also some neurological diseases. So we see this pollution inside the brain, inside the spermatic fluid. Uh, and, and it is a new scenario and it is a new approach to some diseases. Also because uh, medical doctors uh, uh, know uh, very well diseases uh, induced uh, by 
uh, bacteria, by parasites, uh, by viruses, of course, but uh, they are unable to understand the diseases generated or triggered by uh, in an environmental pollution. Uh, and uh, we know that the World Health Organization um, two years ago um, defined uh, the, the impact of uh, this uh, pollution on uh, human health and uh, uh, they um, verified that every year there are more than 7,000 uh, dead people uh, for uh, environmental pollution. Uh, but uh, th there is a, a gap between uh, the, uh, this contamination um, and uh, the um, understanding of the effect, the impact that this contamination uh, makes on uh, human health. Um, but uh, um, the new problem, the new problem is due to the um, tightness of this pollution. Uh, until, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, 50 years ago, um, the environmental pollution was composed of micro-sized particles. And uh, we know that the micro-sized particles can be nailed, but they remain in uh, the lungs. Uh, and uh, they generated uh, pulmonary uh, symptoms and pulmonary um, um, diseases. Uh, probably uh, someone remembers that uh, in 1956, uh, more than 10,000 uh, people died in London due to the, the pea soup. The pea soup, uh, uh, that it is the English name, of uh, the uh, pollution uh, generated uh, in uh, London uh, from uh, the uh, carbon residues uh, uh, of the combustions uh, of uh, the uh, home heating, uh, but also industrial uh, industrial uh, productions. Um, so we understood that uh, the, the, this uh, pollution uh, has an impact on uh, the human uh, body, uh, but uh, uh, now. Uh, the, the, this contamination is different, completely different, because it is also nano-sized. It means below one macro uh, size. And uh, um, this pollution has a, 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 a short contamination, uh, a speed contamination of, of, of the body. Um, you must understand that if you inhale particles of 0 0.1 micron, uh, not a 10 micron, not a 1 micron, but below 1 micron, uh, it means 100 nanometers, uh, these, were, uh, these are particles when uh, go inside uh, the lungs in uh, 60 seconds, they can cross the lung barrier and they go into the blood circulation. And after one hour, they can reach the liver, the kidneys, and so on. But also other uh, districts, uh, like uh, the gonads, like uh, the brain. Then it is a, a problem, because when they are inside, they have uh, a, a immediately a, a, an interaction with uh, the, the blood, the cells, the proteins, uh, and so on. Um, but when they are inside, it is difficult <laughs> to eliminate uh, them. The human body uh, has no, um, has no uh, processes of elimination, of uh, destroying this pollution, also because uh, this pollution uh, was uh, generated at very high temperature. So it is very strong. Uh, it is sometimes it is a chemically inert. So uh, uh, it is difficult uh, 
to, to, to that the body, uh, the immune system can react in a, a, a proper way. Uh, there is also another uh, peculiarity of uh, the, the nanoparticles. Um, they can cross also the uh, cell membrane and they have the possibility to go inside the cytoplasm. And, uh, and uh, they are not uh, toxic as uh, uh, chanide, as uh, molecules, they are nanoparticles. So they can remain there, there in uh, the cytoplasm, uh, but, uh, but uh, in many cases, uh, this cell has uh, the possibility uh, to reproduce itself, to go into mitosis. So at the, uh, at the time, the nuclear membrane disappear. So the chromatin, the DNA, uh, can uh, be divided into parts uh, and they migrate in, into opposite parts of the cell so they will form two new cells. But at that time, the nanoparticles inside the cytoplasm have the possibility to interact directly with DNA. Is that it is a new problem? <laughs> because uh, they can uh, induce uh, damages, only damages to the uh, DNA, but uh, um, it can be able to, to reproduce itself, to, 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 uh, to, um, to form a new proteins uh, thanks to mRNA, uh, RNA messenger, but uh, some damages can be uh, reproduced uh, in uh, RNA and they can be ineradicable. So that, uh, it is a new problem. That it is a base for cancer, for cancerogenic uh, effect. Um, but that is also the base of a new nanomedicine. That it is <laughs> the new problem because uh, in the case uh, of uh, the um, acid accidental uh, uh, dissemination of uh, uh, nanoparticles, um, we, um, we have the free entrance of uh, accidental nanoparticles. Uh, that is a problem. In the case of nanomedicine, no, uh, we, we will have the possibility to construct, to synthesize new nanoparticles in order to, uh, to drive a suitable mechanism uh, for, for, uh, for the health of the cells or, or something. That it is a theory, but uh, sometimes uh, in practice <laughs> you have uh, uh, other effects. It is a, a new science. And uh, I think that uh, uh, in future we, we can have uh, good results. Uh, for, for this uh, possibility, but now we have bad results uh, due to the um, accidental entrance of uh, foreign bodies uh, inside uh, the cell. And uh, we have uh, the possibility of uh, free new interactions uh, with uh, proteins, uh, with organelles, uh, uh, and so on. That uh, it is uh, uh, the novelty. and. Uh, uh, with uh, my um, my uh, research project, uh, uh, we verified uh, that uh, uh, the interaction with DNA uh, is possible. I have images of uh, <laughs> DNA uh, chromatin in contact with nanoparticles. In that case, where um, nanoparticles. Uh, uh, engineer nanoparticles that I introduce, uh, I help, I help to introduce inside the cell because the entrance of these nanobodies is free. Uh, and uh, um, also we verified the interaction of these nanoparticles uh, accidentally disseminated uh, in uh, the environment with the plants, uh, with the animals that can eat uh, uh, green grass uh, polluted with nanoparticles. So um, 
this uh, pollution uh, um, can be uh, very, uh, um, very dangerous for human life in general. Uh, and uh, now uh, we are uh, studying in, inside the, uh, my laboratory, not uh, at the university because uh, I retired from the university. Um, and uh, we are studying uh, mysterious diseases. Um, mysterious diseases, it means uh, uh, diseases uh, that uh, um, uh, are not uh, verified by, by, by the, the official medicine. Um, probably uh, you know that there are some orphan diseases. It means uh, single cases of uh, strange symptoms and uh, sometimes uh, they um, they uh, nominate uh, these uh, diseases uh, syndromes. It is a collection of uh, uh, symptoms not never described in uh, the uh, books of medicine. But uh, in some cases uh, we uh, only uh, starting from the chemical composition of the nanopollution we found inside uh, the bodies, uh, um, we, uh, we were able, uh, we, we could understand the disease and in some cases only eliminating the exposure if uh, uh, was still present, we uh, we were able uh, to um, depress uh, the symptoms uh, and uh, um, uh, to, to improve uh, uh, the health life of, of the patient. That it is, uh, um, for me, a success <laughs> because uh, uh, as a physicist, I helped uh, uh, have a person uh, uh, to to recover and uh, to understand uh, that it is uh, uh, it is important the understanding of the disease because uh, uh, in that case you can give uh, the right drugs if uh, uh, if uh, there are drugs for for some diseases. Thank okay. you so much, Dr. Gotti. That was a lot of great information and your work that you've brought to the forefront has made me change my perspective on on diseases like a, a 180 degree perspective and i just wanted to ask you for those that are suffering with nanoparticle nanotoxicology toxicological issues, are there solutions to remove these nanoparticles from the body? It is a, a very interesting, <laughs> impossible question. <laughs> um, uh, I, have, uh, um, I told you that when you have this pollution inside uh, the body, uh, there are no uh, physiological mechanism of, of elimination of, of these particles because they don't recognize uh, the, this uh, pollution that it is uh, these foreign bodies these foreign bodies um, I published uh, to, to some articles about leukemia and uh, I verified that in uh, the blood of uh, persons affected by uh, uh, leukemia, um, there is a, a, a pollution, a, a traveling pollution in the blood circulation. Um, and uh, uh, this, uh, the concentration of this pollution is very high, higher, um, higher than uh, that of uh, the uh, no normal person, uh, the healthy persons, of, of course. So in that case, I think that there is a possibility of the elimination of uh, this uh, pollution with uh, uh, nano, um, nano equipment, equipment uh, the, um, that uh, use nanotechnologies. Uh, 
So I presented a project to the European Commission five years ago, but uh, um, it uh, had uh, no success. Uh, so in, <laughs> now uh, I, I don't see uh, uh, any possibility uh, to eliminate uh, immediately uh, this pollution. But you understand that when uh, these uh, nanoparticles uh, are uh, hidden inside a, a cell, uh, you don't have uh, any possibility uh, to extract uh, these nanoparticles uh, uh, from uh, the cell. Um, that it is a, a, a new problem. Um, yes, you can try to, to make a, a do, do, detoxification with natural pro, uh, products, but uh, of course, uh, I think that there are no uh, no present solutions uh, for, for, for that. We can hope, but, but um, I worked uh, with uh, um, uh, fight fighters, and the security uh, uh, security persons uh, uh, of uh, who worked uh, um, in ground zero uh, after the twin tower collapse. So I, um, I wrote an article uh, Im immediately after the collapse, and uh, um, I wrote that. Uh, New Yorkers uh, had 2,800 uh, dead, dead people uh, for, for the crash that was the Twin Towers. Uh, um, but uh, in the next year, uh, they will uh, have uh, more mourning. Uh, and uh, after two years, uh, uh, so someone read the article, and after two years, <laughs> I received a telephone call from New York, and, and they asked to, to go there and to verify the, the situation. Uh, oh, oh, that was a, 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 an easy uh, pre pre prevision uh, um, because, uh, um, because I saw a lot of uh, dust released in the environment, especially in the upper part, due uh, to, to uh, the uh, combustion of uh, two airplanes, uh, the, the, the part of uh, the skyscraper. Uh, and, but uh, uh, after, during the collapse, uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, dust was released. So, um, the persons who had the possibility, uh, no, sorry, who were present and inhaled uh, this uh, uh, pollution, uh, they had uh, uh, a lot of uh, foreign bodies internalized, especially uh, the uh, workers who remained in uh, uh, the area for three months in order to, uh, to clean the area. Okay, um, uh, and uh, at the time um, I was present during uh, an experimental uh, uh, experimental procedure of detoxification of some of, of these persons, and uh, um, they um, made exercise. They made a strong sauna, and after they uh, had. Uh, um, they had uh, um, a lot of uh, vitamins uh, ingested. Um, uh, I didn't believe about this uh, soft uh, procedure, but uh, when uh, firefighters uh, and a policeman, uh, very high person, so two, two meter uh, high person, um, they told me that uh, they uh, felt uh, weakness, uh, um, but uh, uh, after the sauna, they um, expelled brown uh, sweat. So the sweat is, is, uh, is uh, uncolored, <laughs> no, no color at all. At the time, I understood that probably this sweat was a good sample to keep and to analyze. 
And in fact, I had the possibility to analyze uh, the, the sweat. And I had discovered that, that some of this pollution uh, um, were internalized in the fatty tissue. So during uh, the sauna, uh, the uh, pores uh, are open and a part of this uh, pollution can be released, part of this pollution. Then it is a, a, a novelty, and I described this, uh, uh, this novelty in uh, my books. Uh, I wrote uh, three books about nanopathologists. Um, but uh, the, the, you, you cannot read uh, this uh, phenomenon in the medical uh, books. That, uh, also because uh, uh, the medical doctors uh, uh, are accustomed uh, uh, to, to, to study in all the books. <laughs> um, they don't know anything about nanomedicine, they, about nanoparticles, about, about environmental pollution, and so on. So there is a gap. And um, I should like to, 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 to form a, a new school uh, about uh, these uh, new diagnostic tools. Uh, because uh, they uh, improve uh, uh, medicine, uh, that it is my, my opinion. So I, I hope that uh, when this uh, lockdown <laughs> will finish, uh, probably um, I, I can uh, make a school of nanopathology, nanotoxicology, something something uh, uh, yes. okay? I, I hope that you do because this seems to be very cutting edge and very, very important for our medical establishments to adopt. And I wanted to ask you, Dr. Gotti, why do you think um, doctors today are not being taught about environmental pollution causing disease? Um, it is a, a problem of the cultural background because uh, um, at school, uh, at school of medicine, um, they have uh, normal uh, classical medical doctor as a professors. And uh, they have uh, um, no cultural background uh, in chemistry, in materials, in environment, uh, 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 and so on. It is a, a, new, a new part uh, of, um, of, of the field of medicine. And uh, not only, but uh, in the world, I am uh, one <laughs> of uh, the few uh, uh, scientists uh, uh, who work in this field. Why? because uh, I have uh, a um, background in physics. So I know the, the law of physics, uh, um, the law of nature, the law of nature also. And uh, um, I have an, a, a background in uh, materials. I am a material scientist, but uh, uh, I studied uh, also uh, anatomy, biochemistry, biochemical chemistry, um, biology, of course, uh, during uh, the specialization. But also, I have worked for mo more than 30 years in a school of medicine. So I taught uh, biomaterials, medical materials, uh, um, biotechnology, uh, uh, and so on. And uh, I have a wide experience also of uh, the medical practice and of, um, of, of the medical approach uh, to, 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 to the diseases. Uh, I went to the surgical room, to, to the autopsic post-mortem room, and in many cases, I had the possibility to, um, uh, to, to, to keep the right tissue to be analyzed. So it is uh, a, another problem. Uh, for instance, uh, um, I had many collaboration with medical doctors, of course, and uh, I asked uh, um, uh, specific tissues 
post-mortem of biotic tissues of, uh, of uh, the patients. Uh, it means uh, uh, that uh, in, cancer, uh, in cancer tissue, I don't want the internal part of, of a tissue. The medical doctors, uh, um, ever, uh, medical doctors, the histopathologist, uh, made already the diagnosis. So that, that is perfect. Uh, and I ask uh, the interface between uh, the cancer and uh, the healthy tissue. Uh, I analyzed more than 5,000 uh, uh, specimens of, of, uh, um, of pathological tissues. Um, and in many cases, there's a possibility to have this uh, part. And at the interface, I find a lot of uh, pollution, not as inside the cancer. And my hypothesis is that uh, um, you internalize uh, this pollution. Uh, in many cases, uh, you, you have also a selective uptake of this pollution for uh, the dimension, chemistry, uh, I don't know exactly. So you have uh, a concentration of uh, these uh, particles uh, in a special uh, place. So many particles uh, around the cell um, have uh, a high probability to have uh, the possibility of the entrance inside the cell. And uh, uh, it is my opinion that uh, uh, it is sufficient that one nanoparticles can reach the DNA, you, you have the high probability to have a modification, a damage of the DNA. Uh, I, I, I wanted to, to give you an example. You know that uh, the fertilization of an egg, uh, human egg uh, in vivo, <laughs> is due to uh, the, the spermatozoa. spermatozoa. Uh, higher is the concentration, higher is the probability to have the fertilization by one of a spermatozoa uh, of the egg. When you have few spermatozoa, mm, uh, uh, the fertilization uh, Mm, is, like, uh, is um, controversial. Uh, you, you, you have a few possibility mm, to, to, to have uh, the entrance of the spermatozoa. But uh, um, when uh, an egg is surrounded by the many uh, spermatozoa, um, the, they um, create the right environment in order that one uh, um, is able to, to go inside and to fertilize the egg. And uh, uh, we are in a similar situation because uh, higher is the concentration of the pollution, higher is the probability uh, the, the, to, 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 have, uh, to have the entrance of some nanoparticle inside the, the cell and to in, induce a, a, a damage. Of course, if the damage is um, heavy, um, is, um, is big, um, you have the death of the cell. So in that case, uh, uh, we are safe. But uh, there is a possibility that uh, one nanoparticle can interact with a few genes. A, a, a small string of genes and induce a damage compatible with the life. It, it, of course, it, uh, after you don't have a normal life, but uh, you, you have a surviving of the cell, uh, that it is a pathology <laughs> that can be heavy or, or not. But uh, uh, le, the damage, uh, the disease is triggered by the, this interaction, this nano bi interaction. Okay. Wow, thank you, Dr. Gotti. I wanted to ask you what equipment are you using to analyze the nanoparticles within the diseased tissues? And the, with uh, my first uh, European uh, uh, project, uh, 
um, I uh, I bought uh, the first uh, uh, scanning electron microscope uh, of a, a new type, environmental type. It means uh, that uh, uh, it can analyze uh, the, um, the the cell, the living tissue, living tissue. Yes, and uh, so uh, I develop uh, a new uh, diagnostic tool, new, new investigations. Uh, now I have a field emission gun, environmental scanning electron microscope, <laughs> because uh, um, also we, uh, we understood that uh, uh, there are many nanoparticles and we need a, a powerful instrument with a high sensitivity in order to identify also uh, nanoparticles because uh, you know that now we, we are surrounded by nanotechnology uh, and so on. We, we have uh, uh, nanoparticles uh, in, in uh, the uh, closes, uh, uh, we have nanoparticles uh, uh, in food. Uh, recently I had uh, a old patient affected by cancer of the stomach. And inside I found a lot of titanium nanoparticles. <laughs> yes, because probably you know that uh, uh, titanium in nano-sized uh, form um, can be added to many, many uh, chocolates, for instance, <laughs> uh, because uh, um, you know that uh, um, with the passage from uh, uh, winter and uh, uh, summer, from uh, uh, the, 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 the frozen uh, temperature to, 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 to the very hot uh, temperature, um, the um, chocolate uh, can have uh, a, a change because there is a separation uh, of uh, the cocoa butter from the chocolate. So you see a white uh, coating uh, of the chocolate. It is uh, safe, but uh, you have uh, the uh, this separation of the cocoa butter from, from the substrate. So if you add uh, to the, the mixture, uh, chocolate mixture, um, titanium nanoparticles, uh, the mixture is uh, uh, more stable and uh, you don't have uh, this effect, but uh, you eat uh, no biodegradable <laughs> titanium uh, with uh, uh, no nutritive effect. Uh, and uh, um, you have a, a lot of uh, this, uh, uh, this contamination uh, in uh, food in order to, to have uh, uh, a mixture um, uh, more aesthetically, aesthetically uh, good. <laughs> so, so that it is a problem. Wow, yeah, that, that definitely is a really big problem. And I wanted to ask you, when you analyze diseased tissues, are you able to identify I guess you just answered this question. You are able to, able to identify the source of the nanoparticles. So you know that it is a component, like it's titanium or it's silver, but it's hard to then trace where someone may have gotten this pollution. Another good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I told you that I am uh, like Sir Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> but, but uh, of course uh, I have some limits. Um, in many cases, uh, um, uh, I could uh, understand uh, the, the source because I, had, uh, um, I could uh, talk with, with the patient. So I, I, I um, posed probably the right questions but because uh, I, um, I supposed a possible origin. In uh, other cases, uh, believe me, it, it is uh, impossible. Uh, my first case uh, uh, was interesting because 
um, I had a, um, a patient uh, uh, of my boss, a patient of my boss, he was a, a medical doctor, of course, he was also the dean of the faculty. And uh, um, this uh, person uh, had uh, strange symptoms. He had a periodic fever, not very high, uh, 37, 37 and a half degrees and for two or three months after uh, uh, they diminished, no fever, and after they uh, started again. Uh, so uh, he had visited uh, four hospitals. But when he arrived in uh, my hospital, uh, he had also serious problems uh, um, uh, in uh, the liver and in the kidneys. And uh, uh, the uh, medical, the nephrologist, uh, tr tried to, to understand uh, the disease. Um, of course, granuloma, crypt cryptogenic granuloma um, uh, were present uh, 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 in uh, the liver and the kidneys. So uh, uh, the, that was an objective uh, uh, presence uh, uh, that uh, um, had, uh, um, uh, that, uh, and uh, they, uh, of course, um, the medical doctor had to, to answer, to, to explain uh, uh, this uh, uh, granuloma. Um, granuloma, it, it is a, a a biological reaction to something. Something can be uh, parasites, uh, uh, can be bacteria, uh, probably in some cases viruses, but it is not the case. Um, and uh, um, I discovered, uh, no, sorry, I offered to perform a new investigation. <laughs> and uh, the nephrology, believe me, because he, he had no, no uh, other answers for, for, for uh, the, the problem. And I discovered the presence of a ceramic, um, ceramic debris, uh, five micron uh, sized, not nanoparticles. Um, and um, so I asked it to, to discuss uh, with the patients. And uh, I asked if he worked um, in, uh, in some uh, field, specific fields, uh, um, um, if uh, he constructed the houses, uh, for instance, uh, uh, I asked uh, um, the place uh, of uh, working, uh, um, I asked many information, but uh, if he smoked, uh, but uh, uh, at the end, uh, after two hours of, uh, um, of uh, discussion, uh, uh, I had no, no other uh, solution <laughs> to propose, and I asked uh, him to open the, the, the mouth. And uh, I wanted to verify uh, the, uh, the dental uh, status. Uh, also because at the time I uh, taught dental materials at the College of Dentistry, and uh, um, because I am an expert of materials. And when I, I asked, uh, um, this, um, the patient uh, told me a strange story. Immediately I verified that he had two dental bridges uh, made in porcelain, highly worn, highly worn. But the patient told me that uh, uh, these uh, prosthesis uh, um, were wrong immediately after uh, the implantation. And uh, um, he told me that after a while, uh, he had uh, a um, lacrimation, tears, spontaneous tears from uh, uh, the left eye. Uh, he had uh, a um, uh, ear ache on the same uh, <laughs> lateral uh, section, and uh, um, he went to the, the medical doctor. Uh, he had uh, uh, antibiotics, but the pain continue, <laughs> continues uh, to, to, to be present. And uh, after, he had also a, a, a pain in, in the back, and uh, he became a bruxist. 
bruxism is a dental disease. And during the night, when you sleep, you have that the brain try to to find the right uh, position of, of the teeth um, because the occlusion of the two arcades are wrong. Uh, so you you um, you have uh, you emit a, a noise due to this uh, mechanical movement. So uh, I understood, I understood that. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, processes uh, uh, were wrong, uh, uh, bad, badly uh, made, um, and uh, uh, they induce uh, all uh, the pains of the, the symptoms of uh, the head. And uh, they were highly worn. So I suppose that uh, there was a release of debris, of porcelain, also because uh, the chemical composition of the debris in the liver and the kidney were similar. Uh, so I asked uh, to extract uh, the prosthesis, to analyze them, and uh, I found that, that, that there was a, 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 um, I verified that the, the composition uh, of uh, the debris in, uh, the, um, in the liver and the kidney uh, was a porcelain. <laughs> so, um, and uh, it was the first time uh, that uh, uh, very uh, big <laughs> uh, debris, micrometic debris, had the possibility to, to passage from uh, the, the colon mucosa into the blood circulation and after, um, after uh, uh, to be entrapped uh, in uh, these organs. They are filters. And of course, they stopped uh, this uh, pollution, but, uh, but uh, of course, they induce uh, granulomatosis. Uh, and uh, only uh, with the extraction of uh, the prosthesis, I stopped uh, the uh, proliferation of, of this contamination. And uh, uh, the medical doctor, uh, of course, uh, gave uh, antibiotics, uh, sorry, cortisones cortisones uh, uh, to, to the patient in order to de decrease the inflammation and uh, the patient uh, uh, recovered, uh, not completely, but uh, the, um, the morphology of uh, the liver uh, decreased uh, and uh, returned to be normal. And uh, of course, uh, there was uh, no um, no need uh, to, to, to go into dialysis because uh, that was the hypothesis of the nephrologist uh, if uh, he couldn't solve uh, the, the problem of the gramotosis. So after that, uh, I, uh, I verified other cases and in, in my books, uh, there are uh, always uh, um, uh, some invest a, a, a chapter called investigative stories <laughs> because I, I, I write about the cases that I, I solved because I had the collaboration of the patient, but because also I had the possibility to check the, um, uh, the chemistry of the pollution inside and the pollution outside in uh, the working place, uh, in some place, different places, different places, because you don't know <laughs> uh, the, where you can uh, uh, have uh, this uh, pollution. Uh, you, you, you don't know the exposure, the possible exposure. Well, Dr. Gotti, thank you so much. And I, I feel like the work that you have done and being in the inventor of nanotoxicology is very, very revolutionary. And being a female scientist is, is very empowering that you have gone down this route and you have made these discoveries. And I honestly, in my heart, feel like this is important work. If we want to have a healthy society, 
we need to start developing some solutions to this. This is this is kind of scary information, you know. Yeah, it's about the, in a, more than a twenty years. I had a few few help, believe me, but by medical doctor, few medical doctors uh, wanted to to discuss uh, uh, with me and recognize the power of, of this uh, approach that it is uh, uh, as a problem. But uh, uh, believe me, now we are uh, working with uh, aerotoxic syndrome. We are working in SIBS syndrome. SIBS means uh, sudden infant death syndrome. So um, when uh, you, uh, when, uh, you um, heard about uh, um, mysterious diseases, that it is work for me, <laughs> because be, be, yes, because uh, it means that the normal medical approach uh, uh, is uh, uh, not uh, uh, not solving uh, the, the problem. It, uh, it is necessary a new approach, a different approach, uh, uh, and my uh, investigations so with uh, scanning electron microscopy can help in, in understand uh, the problem. Um, I did a work in molds uh, because I had no possibility to have um, a, a, a real mold, a natural mold, and uh, to have uh, the pathological tissues of uh, the patient exposed to these uh, molds. And uh, I suppose that in many cases, it is very difficult to recognize uh, molds in uh, the uh, biological samples. That it is uh, the limit of my uh, technique because uh, uh, molds, uh, uh, but also bacteria, are, uh, have a, a chemical composition similar to the normal tissue. That it is uh, uh, the problem. Uh, and uh, uh, it is difficult to recognize uh, uh, from organic tissue to, to, to uh, um, human, uh, uh, human tissue, uh, that it is a limit because I see the difference uh, due to the atomic concentration uh, of uh, the particles uh, respect to the normal tissue, uh, human tissue. Uh, yes, but also in this case, uh, uh, I, I sold uh, some cases, yes. That's great. Eric or Keely, did you guys want to ask her any questions about um, toxic mold and nanoparticles beyond what she just had described or? Well, uh, years ago I discussed with Dr. Gotti the possibility that um, certain molds were processing nanoparticles and emitting them in pathogenic concentrations. And I was wondering if Dr. Gotti has uh, experienced that or seen any evidence of it. Uh, yes, uh, um, I, I could uh, be uh, effective and successful um, for the nature of, of a mold. I am sure, I am sure that a mold uh, can induce diseases. Also because in many cases it's replicating also inside the body. So it is a foreign body, organic, but foreign body inside the human body. So uh, I am sure that uh, it, it can induce uh, uh, symptoms uh, and so on. Um, of course, if I had another research project, <laughs> probably uh, we could uh, uh, develop a new type of investigation specifically for, for mold. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, th there is no money for research, <laughs> especially in, the, in this case. Mm, the, uh, uh, the other question I would have is that the United States and China are both going crazy with silver iodide cloud seeding. And I was wondering what you foresee might happen from dousing the uh, environment with uh, silver iodide ultrafine particles. 
Silver is a problem. <laughs> yes, yeah, you, you are right. Um, I published a, an article uh, where I saw, I, I, I saw uh, images of a silver nanoparticle embedded in a, a brain of a baby uh, died, uh, died uh, for, for uh, an unknown cause. <laughs> uh, so uh, I know that, that it represents a foreign body. Uh, and the silver uh, nanoparticles can have a direct interaction uh, with uh, some proteins uh, like uh, gold. Mm, they are similar. And uh, uh, they can uh, induce uh, a nanobi interaction that uh, um, create a new aggregate, uh, something new inside the body. A part is organic, a part is inorganic. So uh, I don't know how the immune system can uh, see uh, these uh, particles. Uh, probably the uh, immune system recognizes uh, them um, as uh, uh, so, uh, something not self, because one part uh, 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 is uh, similar to, 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 to the, the organic parts of the body. Uh, silver and uh, gold uh, are unknown, of course. And uh, uh, there is a reaction, I'm sure, yes. But uh, of course, it, uh, the uh, um, autoimmune uh, diseases uh, uh, are not uh, my own field of, of research. So I had, uh, uh, I never had samples of uh, persons with uh, these uh, symptoms. Uh, also, it, it is difficult to, 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 to say what is the best sample in order uh, uh, to analyze uh, the, the disease. Um, because uh, the uh, autoimmune diseases uh, are systemic diseases. All the body uh, is compromised. So um, it is very difficult uh, to have a meaningful sample of, of the disease. Mm, probably the blood, I, I, I don't know, sorry. It is a, a limit of, of my studies. So Dr. Gotti, how much money would we need to raise to start that project on looking at toxic mold and nanoparticles? Uh, it is uh, a study that I cannot uh, uh, verify alone. Um, uh, we need uh, other um, scientists, uh, microbiologists, uh, uh, experts of uh, molds, uh, of course, uh, and uh, but uh, uh, so four, five uh, equips uh, of uh, research. Um, I, I think that they they need at least one million of euro uh, because many different uh, uh, tests must be performed uh, in vitro tests, but also in vivo tests, in order to, to understand also what is the, the best sample, uh, the, the uh, more meaningful sample to analyze. Um, it is an intriguing research, yes. Uh, but uh, until now, uh, I was unable <laughs> to, to carry on. My uh, research, my studies, um, um, but um, my, my final goal uh, is to create an international school. And uh, um, I want uh, uh, to, uh, to have uh, uh, students from the medical to, uh, school, but also students from uh, physics, uh, chemistry, and so on, because it is uh, really an interdisciplinary uh, study. Uh, and I want an inter interdisciplinary school, uh, of course. Uh, yes, well, when I form a suitable e equip, <laughs> I have an, an equip, but of course, I, I must have the force <laughs> to, 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 to play. 
I wanted to uh, thank uh, Eric uh, because it is a pleasure to see him again. I hope in good health. Uh, I, I see you, so <laughs> I, I think that you are in good health. Um, and uh, I hope that we can share some information also in, in future, okay? Yes, I hope this is not the last. We definitely would love to keep in touch with you and, and yeah, just learn more. Um, I have, your books are coming on the way to my house and I'm going to read them all page by page. Today, we had Dr. Antoinette Gotti, bioengineer, physicist, originator and creator of the terms nanopathology and nanotoxicology. She's thinking about running a school and getting that going. We are so excited for the information that she provided us today. Um, yes, revolutionary uh, if you want, I can uh, give you uh, some detail about uh, my book that I wrote. And uh, there is another one uh, on advances in nanopathology. And uh, it was released at the beginning of this year. Great, yes. Everyone, if you just heard that, please go to your nearest library, go to Amazon, go to her website, order her books, because this is important information that everyone, I think, should know. And I will go ahead and provide Dr. Gotti's information below, as, as well as her diagnostics company that she has that you can consult with. And again, thank you so much. Please like, share, comment on our content and feel free to donate to our cause on our GoFundMe and Patreon pages. Thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Ciao. You know, it, it's um, amazing that, well, I, my theory for the uh, 1985 Lake Tahoe mystery illness, chronic fatigue syndrome, was that we were being doused with silver nanoparticles, extremely high concentrations. And one of the weird clues that everybody has forgotten about is that people had brown sweat and they became reactive to their own sweat, allergic to it. Yes, I believe you. <laughs> that sounds yes, very consistent. That, uh, uh, silver uh, is oxidized uh, in a short time. So it can be also uh, sensitive to, to the UV of, of the light. So uh, you have also the color of, of your skin changed for this interaction uh, with uh, the light and so on. Okay. I must leave you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.